Hello everybody and welcome to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a security system in Python using the OpenCV module. Now what we'll be doing is actually detecting a face or a body in our video camera footage. So you need to have some type of webcam to be able to follow along with this video or any type of camera that you can kind of like plug into your computer and you can view in live time. What we'll do is we'll be accessing that camera using OpenCV, detecting a face or detecting a body. And then as soon as we detect that, we're going to start recording. So we're actually going to record all of the motion or all of the time that this thing is in the frame, this person is in the frame, we'll then save that video. And then from there, you guys can extend this. You could email it to yourself. You could send yourself a notification. You could, you know, snap a photo of the person's face. I'll actually show you how we can get directly the face from the video frame. Anyways, this will be a really good kind of starting point if you are trying to build, you know, a security camera or security system or something along those lines. With that said, let's go ahead and dive in and start writing some code. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I will mention is that I do have an OpenCV Python tutorial series. So in this video, I will kind of skim through some of the more advanced OpenCV concepts. I'm not going to explain them in depth because they would take a really long time. So if you do want to understand how those things work, then do go and check out my OpenCV Python tutorial series. I'll kind of reference which videos, which things are talked about in as we go through here, and I'll leave a link to that series in the description. So now that I've mentioned that, the first thing that we need to do here is install OpenCV. So it doesn't really matter what operating system you're on, open your terminal, open your command prompt. Here I'm in VS Code, so I'm using the VS Code terminal, and type pip3 install OpenCV hyphen Python. Now, if that doesn't work for you, try just pip. If that doesn't work, try Python hyphen M like that. And if that doesn't work, try Python 3 hyphen M, okay? trial of those. I already have this installed, so I'm not going to run that command. Once you have it installed, though, we can continue. If for some reason that doesn't work, I'll leave two videos in the description that show you how to fix this pip command, one for Mac and Linux, the other for Windows. OK, now that we have that, I'm in a Python file, I'm in VS Code. And the first thing I'll mention is wherever you create this Python file is where the video recordings are going to be saved. So just, you know, make this in a folder or something. Just don't put this like directly on your C drive because there's going to be a ton of video files when you're actually running this. OK, so now let's import a few things. We're going to import CV2. We're going to import time and we're going to import date time. OK, we'll use some of these later. First thing I'm going to show you how to do is access your webcam and just view video here in Python. So that's step one. So to do that, we're going to say capture is equal to cv2 dot video capture like that. And we're going to put the number zero. Now, what you can do if you have multiple video capture devices is index them with zero, one, two, three. The first video device will be zero. I only have one, so I can only put zero. But if you had multiple, you do one, two. And so if you're not getting the correct video camera, just increment this number, go up uh, each time and just check and see if you're getting the right device. Now that we've done that, what I need to do is set up a while loop. So I'm going to say while true and I'm going to say underscore comma frame is equal to cap dot read. So what I'm doing is reading one frame from my video capture device. I'm then going to display that on the screen. And so we'll display a ton of frames. I mean, that's really what a video is, right? A ton of images. So we'll do that and we'll be able to see our video. Now, if you're wondering why I did this, the underscore is a placeholder variable. I could do something like H or X or some variable name. The reason I'm doing that is because this returns something else as well. We don't really need to know what that is, but the only thing we care about is the frame. So we're going to say whatever this is, we don't care about. So we just put an underscore comma frame. This is what we want. All right. So now what we're going to do is say CV2 dot IM show. We're going to show as our camera the frame. Now, this is just going to be the title of the window that shows you the actual video frame. Name this whatever you want. Doesn't need to be camera and then put frame right here. Great. Now that we have that, I just need to set up one thing that allows us to actually quit this because right now, if you run this, you're going to be in an infinite loop and without crashing your program, you won't be able to actually quit uh, this while loop. So to do that, we are going to say if and this will be CV2 dot wait key one equals equals the ordinal of Q then break. Now, I won't really explain how this works again. Watch the CV2 tutorial series specifically. I believe the first video 
Uh, actually, it might be a different video, but one of those videos explains how this works. But this pretty much just says, hey, if you hit the Q key, stop. OK, break the program end it. All right. Now that we have that, we need to release the resources from this camera. So it's just good practice after you kind of access a camera that you release the resource. So what we're doing here is we're saying, OK, give me access to the video capture device. It's going to activate the video camera and then this program has control of it. OK, so you won't actually be able to run this if another device is using your video camera actively. So make sure it's not being used when you run this. But what we need to do is make sure that once this program ends, something else can now use the video camera. So we're going to say cap dot release like that. And that will release the resource, kind of clean it up and allow other things to now use this once the program ends. Then we're going to say CV2 destroy all windows and this will destroy the window that is showing the video capture device. Perfect. Now that we have all of this, we can run our code, cross our fingers and pray that this works. I will mention this does take usually for me like 15, 20 seconds to actually run. Not sure why it takes so long. Hopefully for you guys, it's faster, but it's totally normal if it's kind of hanging here. I've had it hang for up to like, you know, 45 seconds sometimes. And so if you see me cutting throughout this video, it's probably because I'm just getting past the, the hanging of the video camera. Anyways, I can see my video camera on now. So let me get out of VS Code. Notice we have this camera frame here and you can see my beautiful face now in two places on the screen. Regardless to quit, I'm going to hit Q. We are now done and we can continue. OK, so now that we've done that, we have access to our video camera. I want to detect faces and bodies. So to do that, I'm going to use something called a har cascade. Now, a har cascade is kind of the first word that I need to say. It's a har cascade classifier. And what the har cascade classifier is, is something that is pre-trained and pre-built by OpenCV to detect faces or whatever we want, really, in images. So in this case, we're going to use a face detection one and a body detection one. And really all you need to know about these is that you pass an image to them. They've been trained on like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of images. They're really, really good. And they can tell you very quickly if faces exist in the image and where those faces are or if whatever you're trying to classify exists in the image. So to set these up, we're going to say face underscore cascade is equal to CV2 dot cascade classifier like this. We're then going to pass CV2 dot data dot har cascades like this plus and then the name of the har cascade we want to access. So in this case, I want the har cascade underscore frontal face underscore default dot XML. Let me make sure this is correct. Uh, looks good to me, except I got to spell cascade correctly. So this is what we want. Let me just kind of run through this line, and explain what I just did. So I set up a cascade classifier. I need to pass to it a classifier. All of the classifiers we have here already exist. They're pre-built into OpenCV. You don't need to install them or download them or anything. And one of the ones we have is this frontal face default classifier. And so I have to pass kind of like the base directory of where all of these classifiers exist, which is cv2.data.harcascades. Make sure you have the plural here, so the S. And then I add the actual name of the classifier. So I just want this classifier. That's pretty much it. Uh, if you want a full list of all of the classifiers, I'll leave a link to it in the description. You can mess around with other ones. They pretty much all work the same. Okay, now that we have face, we want body. So I want the body cascade. I'm going to say cv2.data.harcascades. And this time, rather than the frontal face default, I want the full body, not fully body, the, no, that was actually right, full body like that, dot XML. Let me make sure that's correct. Yes, that looks good. Okay, so we now have the full body one and we have the frontal face one. So now that we have them, let's actually use them. So to use them, the first thing I need to do is actually convert my frame here to a grayscale image. So all of these classifiers require a grayscale image to do the classification, and they will tell us the location and presence of any faces in the grayscale image. Now, it doesn't really matter. We can still show like the color image on the screen. It's just that to do the classification, it needs grayscale. So I'm going to say gray is equal to, and this will be cv2.cvt color like that. We're going to pass our frame. We're going to pass cv2 dot color, and this is going to be BGR two and then gray. OK, what this will do is give us a new image that is grayscale. Uh, and yeah, that's that's about it. That's all I can really say for that. OK, now that we have the grayscale image, let's use a classifier. So I'm going to say faces in lowercase 
is equal to face cascade not dot fit dot this is going to be detect and then multi scale like this it's a specific algorithm we're going to use with the hard cascade i need to pass to this my frame so i'm going to pass gray which is my grayscale image i need to pass what's known as a scale factor and what's known as my minimum number of neighbors now let me stop for a second explain what these are so gray clearly is our image okay this is what we want to detect the faces on as I said, this is going to return to us a position or sorry, list of positions of all of the faces that exist. Yes, this can give you multiple faces if they are all in the image. So we'll actually give you the X, Y, width and height of all faces that exist. Anyways, you pass the frame and then you pass the scale factor. Now, the scale factor is a number that determines the accuracy and speed of this algorithm. It does a lot more than that, but I'm not going to explain exactly how it works. Pretty much you should keep this number between 1.1 and 1.5. I find 1.3 is the best kind of middle ground for speed and accuracy, but the lower this number goes, the more accurate it gets, but the slower it is. So if I do something like 1.01, .01, by the way, the minimum for this number is one, you have to have something larger than one. You're going to get uh, a very, very accurate algorithm, but it's going to take a very long time to run. So if you're noticing that at 1.3, your faces aren't quite accurate or it's too slow or actually other way around, if they're not too accurate, make this number lower, make it like 1.2, 1.1. And if you notice here that it's still too slow, then make it something like 1.5, 1.6. But again, 1.3 will most likely be fine for you. These things still work extremely quickly, even if you make them like 1.2 or 1.1. But let's go with 1.3. Okay, now what is minimum number of neighbors? Uh, this one is a little bit complicated, but pretty much the way that this har cascade is going to work is it's going to detect like hundreds of faces and all of them are going to be the same face. So it's going to look at my face and it's going to draw like, you know, 20 boxes around my face and say, we have 20 faces when really it's just my face 20 times. And so what you do with this minimum number of neighbors is you say, OK, how many faces do I need to detect in a specific vicinity for me to call this thing a face? And in this case, I'm putting five. So I have to have five kind of boxes overlapping each other in one area for me to say, hey, this here, this is a face. That's what it means. So for this number, you don't really have to worry about it too much. Make it something between three and six. The higher the number goes, the uh, less number of faces you're going to get detected. The lower the number, the more faces. So if you're finding it's not picking up faces, make it lower, maybe make it three or four. If you're finding it's picking up too many faces, things that aren't faces, make it like six. OK, but five is a really good middle ground. Anyways, now that we have this, I'm going to show you how we can actually use this to draw where the faces are on our image. So to do this, we're going to say for X, Y, width and height in faces, we're going to say CV2 dot rectangle. This is going to draw a rectangle on the screen. We're going to draw this on our frame. Notice I'm drawing this on my color image, not on my grayscale image. That's because the grayscale image and the color image in terms of, uh, I guess, locations so like X, Y, width, height, where faces are is the exact same. So I'm going to say frame. I'm going to say X, Y. I am going to say X plus width and Y plus height. I'm going to say 255, 0, 0, and I'm going to say three. Now, what the heck did I just do? Let me explain. So frame, this is the image you want to draw. On. I want to draw an image on this frame, OK? Or I want to draw a rectangle, sorry, on this image. Then we have point one and point two. This is the top left and bottom right hand corner of our rectangle. So X, Y, this is my top left. X plus width and Y plus height. That is my bottom right. So it's telling me the two corners of the rectangle and then it can draw the rectangle according to that. That's all I need. Okay. Then this is the color of the rectangle. Don't get confused here. This is actually BGR, not RGB. So 25500 is going to give me a blue rectangle because blue, green, red. Kind of weird how they do it, but that's how it is. And then this is the line thickness. So I want this to be three pixels thick across the rectangle. Sweet. Now this will draw all of our faces too because we're doing this in a for loop. And if we have no faces, well, it will draw no faces. OK, now that we have that, I'm going to skip the body for right now. We'll just do the face. Let's run this and let's see if it works. And there we go. We have our window and notice the blue rectangles kind of follow me around. Now, if I go and like I hide behind my microphone, notice it disappears. So obviously it's not perfect, but considering how quick it is, it is a pretty good job. So there you go. That is the face detection. OK, I'm going to quit that. Uh, so now that I have quit that, 
what I'm actually going to do is remove this because I don't actually care about the location of my faces or of my bodies. And by the way, if you want to do this with the body cascade, you do the exact same thing. So in fact, let's just do this. Let's say bodies is equal to face cascade dot detect multi scale 1.3 and 5. So same parameters. OK, and if you wanted to draw the bodies, then what well, you would just repeat this, but you do it in, in bodies instead of faces. OK, we're not going to do that for right now. The point is, I don't really care where my faces are, where my bodies are. Because I'm not going to draw rectangles and stuff around them. I just want to know if they're there. So if they are there, then I will start recording. That's kind of my logic here. If I see a body or a face, start recording. I don't really care where in the frame it is. So how can I check if a body or if a face is here? Well, I can look at the length of my faces and the length of my bodies, because if I have one face, this will be length one. If I have one body, this will be length one. It's a list of locations. So I'm going to say, if the len of faces plus the len of bodies is greater than zero, then recording equals true. And this should be recording, not just record. OK, so we're going to get the len of the faces, add it to the len of bodies. If we have at least one body or one face, then we will start recording. So let's make a variable up here. Let's call this recording and let's make this equal to true. Now, before I go any further, let me show you how to record video and then we'll implement all of the logic for actually doing like recording at a specific time, essentially. OK, so to record video, you need a few things. The first thing you need is the frame size of the video you want to record. So since we're going to be recording our video capture device, the frame size of our video recording needs to be the exact same as our video capture device. So I'm going to say my frame underscore size is equal to this is going to be a tuple. And this is going to be the int of cap dot get three cap dot get three gives you the width as a floating point value. So we have to round it using int and then we're going to say int and cap dot get four. OK, so inside of here we put a four. So this gives us the height uh, have one extra bracket. there. Sweet. Now we have the frame size. Next thing we need to set up is what's known as our four character code, which is the unique identifier for the specific format our video is going to be saved as. Now I want to save my videos using MP4 format. So what I'm going to do is say that my 4CC, four character code, is equal to CV2 dot video writer underscore 4CC. And then inside of here, I'm going to pass a MP4V and then an asterisk. Now let me explain this and let me just look at my notes and make sure I did this right. Uh, OK, looks right right now, though we might have to change this later. So what this does is actually pass this string here as four parameters to this function. So the asterisk kind of like decomposes this and into four separate arguments because this actually accepts four characters, right? MP V or MP four. And then V. So what we need to do is pass well this and an easier way for me to do this is MP four V with an asterisk. Hopefully that kind of makes sense, but that's what that does. OK, so now that we have that, we need to make an output stream. Now, the output stream is where we're going to write all of our content to. And then we will kind of close the output stream once we want to save the video. So we're going to say out is equal to CB2 dot video writer. And we're going to pass the file name. So I'll just go with video for right now dot MP4. Then I need to pass my four character code. So I'm going to pass four CC. I need to pass my frame rate. So I'm going to go with 20. And lastly, I need to pass my frame size. OK, now you can just do 20 like that as well. So you need video name, the uh, four character code, which you got to set up like this. And then you need your frame rate. Make this whatever you want. I'm going to make it 20. And then frame size. I am just going to go with the frame size of my video capture device. Now that we have out, it's actually very, very easy to make or save a video. What you do is you say out dot write. Notice I'm doing this in the while loop. I'm going to write my frame. And now all I need to do is once I quit this while loop here. So once I quit the program, I have to say out dot release and this will save the video. So I'm going to write all of the frames to this output stream. And then as soon as I release the stream, it saves the video. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. And let's see if we generate a video. Now, the video will be in the same directory as where your Python file is. So keep that in mind if you're kind of searching for where the video is. All right. So here we go. I have my video capture stream in front of me. Notice I'm not drawing the faces anymore. That's intentional. Now, when I hit Q, it stops. Let me open up my Windows Explorer and show you the video. 
So we will continue in one second, but I need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use for preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. They have over 160 coding interview practice questions taught by the best instructors, one of which is me. Check out Algo Expert from the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. All right, so here we go. We can see the saved video. I'm not going to play it. I mean, like you guys know the video. Here you go. It works. <laughs> it was just what you saw before. And now we can continue. So now that we know how to save video, we know how to access the faces. We know how to do all kinds of other stuff. What we're going to do is implement the logic for saving videos at a specific time, only when a person is in the frame of our video camera. So to do this, we need a little bit of logic. We need this first variable, which is recording. This next variable we need is I got to look at my notes here. Uh, we're going to call this detection underscore stopped underscore time. We're going to make this equal to none. I'll explain why we need this in a second. And then I'm going to say timer underscore started is equal to false. And I'm actually going to change recording to be equal to detection to say, hey, we did detect something we have detected. I think that makes more sense. OK, so let's go with detection. If I could spell it like that is equal to true. OK, so the reason I want these two variables detection, stop time and timer started is because as soon as someone leaves the frame, I still want to record for a certain period of time. So, you know, most traditional video cameras, someone comes in the frame or some motions detected and then it will record like a certain duration of time after they leave the frame. That's what I want to do. Now, there's two good reasons for that. One, that just seems like a good thing to do. Two, what will happen in my algorithm if I don't do this is that as soon as the face is not detected, which can happen sometimes, like the class, the classifier can mess up, it will instantly stop recording the video and then it will restart the video immediately. And so what you'll get is like, you know, a hundred like millisecond long videos where it just like start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. We don't want that. Instead, we'd want one longish video. And then if I'm out of the frame for a certain period of time, then we'll stop and then we'll restart the video as soon as I come back in. Hopefully that kind of makes sense, but that's the idea. And if you want to see what happens, if you don't do this, well, then just run it without the logic that I'm going to implement. Next, I need this variable. I'm going to say seconds to record after detection, kind of a ridiculous variable name, but I'm going to go with five uh, just so that we can very easily change this later on. Great. Now that we have this, let's go down here. So we have our if statement and we say if the line of faces plus the line of bodies greater than zero detection equals true. However, I want to first say if detection. So if detection like this, then timer underscore started equals false. So you'll see why we need this in a second. I'm just going to have to code out a bunch of stuff and then I'll walk you through all of the code because it's hard to break this into like different sections. Otherwise, I'm going to say else detection is equal to true. So starting off here, we're saying, OK, if we detected a face or a body, but we've already detected a face or a body, like we're already detecting it, just say the timer started is equal to false, which means if we were going to stop recording, don't stop recording. We just detected a body and a face. Again, seems kind of confusing because we haven't implemented the timer started yet, but just keep that in mind. Now here we're saying, okay, well, if we weren't already detecting something, so if we hadn't detected something already, let's set detection equal to true. And now let's start a new video because I want to start a new video or start a new recording whenever I first detect a new body or face after we hadn't been detecting something previously. If we were detecting something previously, just keep writing to the video output stream. We don't need to start a new video. Otherwise, we would have a new video for every frame, right? So what I'm going to do is take this out variable, delete it from there. I'm going to put it in here and say out is equal to this. However, first, I want to change this output file name and the name should actually be equal to whatever the current date and time is. That's usually what you have for like your video file names when you have some type of security system. So we have import date time here. Make sure you have that. We're going to say current time is equal to date time dot date time like this dot now dot strf time. And then I'm just going to copy something in here and I'll explain what this is in a second, but it's easier to copy it. Okay. So what this is going to do is format our time. Uh, why is this? Okay. I think this is all right. I'm just trying to make sure I haven't messed something up here. Okay. It looks good to me. So we're saying, okay, let's get the current time. All right. And then we're going to format the time. So we get it in day, month, year, hour, uh, month, and second or 
Does that make sense? Hour, sorry, hour, minute, second. Okay. Day, month, year, hour, minute, second. That's what this is going to give me in this order. If you only want, say, like just the hour, minute, second, then just remove these, right? You can mess with it as you want. But make sure you don't have any colons in here or anything that's an invalid character in saving a file name, because if you have that, then this just isn't going to work. I found that out the hard way when before making this video for like an hour, I was debugging and I had a damn colon in this name and that was the issue. So just keep it like this. That's going to give us our current time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use the current time. So I'm going to use an F string and say F and then current time like that dot MB4. So this will actually be my file name. Uh, let me see if there's anything else I need to do here. That actually looks good to me. After I do this, though, I'm just going to print started recording just so we know that, OK, we just started recording, started a new output stream. Now we can start writing to that stream. Great. So now that we have this part of the logic, I'm going to implement else here. So I'm going to say, OK, else if detection. So actually, this isn't else if this is just elif. been writing in too many different programming languages recently. So I'm going to say, all right, if we did not detect a body or a face, but we had detected something previously, the detection variable was equal to true, then what we're going to do is say uh, start our timer. So start our timer for when we should end the uh, video stream or end the video recording. Hopefully this makes sense. But if we just stopped detecting something, so if we no longer see a face or a body, but we just were seeing a face or a body, we're going to wait whatever this variable is. So five seconds before we stop our video recording. That's what this like part of logic that I'm going to write is going to do. So I'm going to say timer underscore started is equal to true. And then I'm going to say the detection uh, stopped time is equal to time dot now. OK, uh, sorry, not time dot now. This is time dot time. And this will give you the current time. Now, we also could use day time dot now, but time dot time is just a little bit better for this purpose. Anyways, go with this. Okay, Detection time equals time dot time. However, we need a way to actually stop the video. So what I'm going to do is say if the timer has started, so if the timer was already started, if we already did this, then what I want to do is check if the timer is past its five seconds. So I'm going to say if time dot time minus the detection stop time is greater than seconds to record after detection, so greater than or equal to, then what I will do is stop the video. I'm going to say detection is equal to false. I'm going to say the timer started is equal to false. And I'm going to say out dot release. This will save the video. Then I'm going to print stop recording. OK, and let's just go with capital here for consistency. OK, then I'm going to put else and I'm going to put this. All right, so I'm sure everyone's confused. So let's run through this and just see what happens. All right. So let's pick our first scenario for running through this in that we just started the program. We've not detected anyone yet. This detection variable is false. OK, that, that's the first thing we'll say. This for right now is equal to false. OK, so when this is false, we just detect a body or face. So we just, my face just comes in frame and we say, OK, we've detected a body or face. So we get inside this if statement. Were we just detecting a body or face? No, we weren't. So we go into this else. So we say, OK, detection is equal to true. We have detected something. What's the current time? We get the current time create our video output stream. We're going to make a new video. We're going to start recording right now because we just detected a new body or new face. OK, boom, goes on. Face is in the frame. All of a sudden stops. Face is no longer in the frame. So this is false. So we go to this elif and we say, OK, were we just detecting something before? We were. We were recording before detection was equal to true. So what we're going to do is check if the timer was started. Well, the timer was not started because we just stopped detecting something. So start the timer. All right, so we say detection stop time is equal to time dot time. This is telling us, okay, at this point in time, we stop seeing something on the video frame or in the video camera. We didn't see a person anymore. Okay, continue. All of a sudden, we no longer see any more people. All right, so we no longer see any more people. We come back here. We say, okay, were we detecting people before? Yes, we were. Has the timer started? The timer has started. So now we run this. We say, okay, well, is the current timer or is the current time, sorry, five seconds passed when we started this timer. That's what it's doing. It's saying has five seconds elapsed. If it hasn't, we just continue. Keep running the program. If it has, though, if five seconds or more has elapsed, we say detection equals false. Timer start equals false. Stop the current recording. Print stop recording. And now everything resets, right? Hopefully that's kind of makes sense. OK, so now let's imagine that 
this is not the case. All right. So maybe it's only been one second or two seconds since someone's left the frame. Now, all of a sudden, boom, I'm back in the frame. We see a face. So what happens is this is true. We did detect a face or we did detect a body. The timer has started and we were detecting something before. So if detection, yes, we were detecting something before, timer started equals false. Now, the reason for this is I need to kind of reset this time because all of a sudden we just saw another person. So we're going to say timer start equals false. Keep recording. And now if the person leaves, we're going to have five seconds after they just left to keep recording. Hopefully this is kind of making sense, but this is to mitigate the fact if I like leave and come in the frame a bunch of times very quickly, I don't get like 20 videos. I just have one video that maintains or records the entire time of me leaving, coming back, leaving, coming back. I'm hoping this is kind of making sense, but that's what the logic is doing. It's just saying we're not going to stop the recording unless it's been five seconds that someone entered the frame. That's what all of this does. And at this point, I can't really explain it much more. You can kind of run through the scenarios yourself and see how this works, but I promise you it does work. OK, now that we have this, we actually need to write to the output. But we only want to write to the output stream. First of all, if the output stream exists and if we are recording. So we're going to say if detection, then out dot write. And that's actually all we need for this saying, OK, well, if we are detecting something, then we're going to be writing. So as soon as this variable becomes false, we stop writing to the output stream. And well, we would have stopped recording and uh, then we would have started a new recording as soon as we detected a new thing. Hopefully making sense, but that's actually all that I need. I'm looking at my other screen here to make sure I didn't forget anything. And I think this is all the code we need for our security system. So let's run this. Let's test it out. And then I'll do one more recap and go through everything that we've done. OK, so let's run, give it a second and see what we get for our videos. All right. So we already got an error. My apologies. It's because I set detection equal to true to start. We need to set this equal to false to start because otherwise we get this out is not defined error because I tried to write to the output stream before I created it. So just make detection equal false and let's try it again. All right. So we just ran it. It says started recording because it detected my face. What I'm going to do now is leave the frame. You'll see that after about five seconds, it stops recording. Then I'll come back in and we'll, we'll just we'll do a few examples. So I'll be right back. All right. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Me running around here trying to get this to work. Um, let me get my face out of the frame for a second, though, just so we stop this last recording. All right, great. So we stopped the last recording. Oh, OK, let's start again. Anyways, let's just quit and let me go here and see that we have four recordings now. And notice that as I kind of left the frame and come back in the frame or came back in the frame, if I didn't wait five seconds, the recording didn't stop. So it just continued and I left, came back in, left, came back in, whatever. So hopefully that kind of gave you an example of how this works, but obviously you can tweak some of the settings to make it work differently. Anyways, that's it. That, that's literally all we need for this security system. So let me make this a bit smaller here and I will kind of go through the code one last time just to make sure everyone's clear and then explain to you how you can maybe make this even better in the future if you wanted to. So we create our hard cascades, our video capture device, we do our imports, declare all our variables. I don't really need to talk about all this. Here we can quickly cover this. We're getting the frame size and we're getting our four character code, which is the kind of video format, right? So I'm going with MPV4 because I'm doing an MP4 video. If you wanted a different format, you'd have to pick something else. Again, link in the description to find out what those formats are. Continuing, we start our while loop. We capture our frame. We can convert our frame to grayscale. And we detect the faces and the bodies in our frame, in the grayscale frame. We then say, have we detected or have we seen any uh, faces or bodies? If we have, we go inside of here and we say, OK, were we detecting stuff before? Are we currently recording, essentially? Yes, we were. So timer start equals false, just to make sure that if we were um, about to end the video, if we'd start that timer, we now make that false. So we're going to keep recording. We kind of like reset the timer, if that makes sense. That's what this is doing. Then we go into this else. So if we were not recording before, then we need to start recording because we just detected a face or a body. So we say detection equals true. We get the current time, use that as our file name, start the video output stream, create a new recording. OK, continuing, we go to this LF. So LF we're recording. So if we have not detected any faces or bodies and we're recording, then it's time to start the timer and see if any faces or bodies come back in the frame within that timer duration. So if the timer started, we check if the timer has expired. And if it has, we stop the recording. If it hasn't, we just continue. If the timer has not started, we start the timer and keep track of when we started the time. OK, that's it. That's how this logic works. 
Then we come here, we say, okay, are we detecting something? If we are, write, right? Pretty much this is saying, are we recording? If we're recording, yes, let's write out to the frame. Then we show the current frame and you press Q if you want to quit. Now it's worth mentioning, you don't have to show the frame, right? Like I can do this and this will work perfectly fine without me actually displaying the frame on the, on the screen. Obviously the point of that is it makes a better video, but you, you don't need to show this, especially if you're just running this on like a Raspberry Pi. And in fact, it will be a lot faster if you don't show this frame on the screen. Finally, we just release all of our resources. So I release out just to make sure that in case we were uh, recording and we didn't stop the recording when we got out of this while loop, that we stop it just in case. And then we release our video capture device and we destroy all our open CV windows. Perfect. All right. So with that said, I am going to wrap up the video here. All of this code will be available at the link in the description. And so will that OpenCV Python tutorial series that would explain all of this more in depth. I hope you guys found this useful and you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I will see you in another one.